Have you ever wondered how the ancient Egyptians managed to preserve their dead, turning them into what we today call mummies? In the grandeur of the ancient world, few civilizations held as much allure as Egypt, a land where the boundaries between life and death were as fluid as the waters of the Nile. This was a world steeped in magic and mystery, where the gods walked among men and pharaohs were seen as divine incarnations. But it was also a world obsessed with death, or rather, with life after death. For the ancient Egyptians, death was not the end, but a transition. The soul, they believed, embarked on a perilous journey through the underworld to reach the afterlife, a paradise of eternal bliss. To ensure this journey's success, they developed an intricate system of rituals and rites, the most notable of which was mummification. The process of mummification was no simple task. It required precision, patience, and a deep understanding of the human body. This statement is not an exaggeration, for the ancient Egyptians were true masters of mummification, a process that strikes a balance between art and science. The journey to eternity began with the removal of the organs. The brain, once thought to be of no importance, was often discarded, while the heart, believed to be the seat of the soul, was left intact. The liver, lungs, stomach, and intestines were carefully extracted and preserved in canopic jars, each one guarded by one of the four sons of Horus, the falcon-headed god. Once the body was emptied, it was then washed and stuffed with bundles of linen or sawdust to maintain its human form. The body was then covered with natron, a naturally occurring salt, which served as a desiccant to dry out the body. This stage lasted about 40 days, mirroring the biblical period of purification. After the drying phase, the body was washed again and then anointed with resins and oils, turning the corpse into a fragrant shell impervious to decay. This was not just a practical step, but a symbolic one, turning the deceased into a godlike being that could survive in the afterlife. The final step was the wrapping of the body in hundreds of yards of linen bandages. This was a meticulous process, with each finger and toe wrapped individually before the entire body was enveloped. The wrapping was often accompanied by prayers and spells to protect the deceased in their journey to the afterlife. Among these wrappings, amulets bearing magical inscriptions were hidden, serving as protection against evil spirits. The head of the deceased was often adorned with a mask, a golden visage that represented the eternal and divine aspect of the deceased. This intricate process resulted in a mummy, a time capsule waiting to reveal its secrets. A silent sentinel from the past carrying the legacy of a civilization that continues to fascinate us even today. Imagine stumbling upon a tomb untouched for thousands of years and finding a perfectly preserved mummy inside. Picture the awe, the shock, the eerie silence that would fill the air. This was the reality for many early archaeologists, pioneers of a new kind of adventure, who ventured into the sandy stretches of Egypt in search of answers. These explorers were not merely treasure hunters, they were scholars and scientists. Driven by curiosity, and the thirst for knowledge. Their discoveries were not just about finding forgotten riches, but about unearthing stories of an ancient civilization that had been shrouded in mystery for millennia. The first mummies they found were in the tombs of the Great Pyramids, each one a silent sentinel of the past. Can you fathom the astonishment, the reverence, the sheer incredulity they must have felt upon laying their eyes on these marvelously preserved bodies? Imagine their hands trembling as they delicately unwrapped the linen, revealing a face that hadn't seen the light of day for thousands of years. From these mummies, the archaeologists were able to glean invaluable insights about the life and customs of the ancient Egyptians. Their diet, their diseases, their age at death, even their social status, everything was written in their mummified remains, like a diary preserved in flesh and bone. Scientific studies followed, using technologies like X-rays, Connecticut scans, and DNA testing to scrutinize these mummies. From these studies, we learned more about the mummification process, about the diseases that plagued the ancient Egyptians, 
and even about their familial relationships. Each study was a lens into the past, offering a glimpse of a world that was so different, yet strangely similar to our own. These mummies have taught us so much, not just about the people they once were, but also about the people we are now. They are a testament to the human spirit, to our collective desire to understand and be remembered, to leave a mark that withstands the test of time. But what happens when a mummy doesn't just reveal secrets of the past, but also brings with it a chilling curse? Tales of cursed tombs and doomed explorers have added a layer of supernatural intrigue to our fascination with mummies. This allure of the unknown, the thrill of the unexplained, is what draws us into the world of Egypt's embalmed monarchs. Now, let's delve into the most famous mummy's curse, that of the boy king, Pharaoh Tutankhamun. The year was 1922. A team of explorers led by archaeologist Howard Carter, fueled by ambition and curiosity, breached the sealed chambers of the young pharaoh's tomb. Little did they know, they were about to unearth a tale that would send ripples of mystery through the annals of history. As soon as the tomb was opened, strange occurrences began to unfold. The first to fall victim to the alleged curse was Lord Carnarvon, the expedition's financial backer. Merely a few months after the tomb's opening, he succumbed to a mysterious illness. Then came the string of inexplicable deaths. Carter's personal secretary was found smothered in his room, a wealthy visitor to the tomb died of pneumonia, and Carter's pet canary was reportedly eaten by a snake. The string of misfortunes led many to believe in the curse of the pharaoh. But here's the twist. Howard Carter, the man who led the expedition and who spent the most time in the tomb, lived for another 17 years after the tomb's discovery. This has led some skeptics to question the validity of the curse. Was it all just a result of natural causes and pure coincidence, amplified by the media and public fascination? So, do mummies carry with them a supernatural curse, or is it all just a spooky coincidence? The answer may remain as enigmatic as the mummies themselves. But one thing is for sure, our fascination with these ancient monarchs and the mysteries they hold is far from being unwrapped. From the heart of the desert sands, the allure of the pharaohs continues to captivate us. But what fuels this fascination? Why does the mystery of mummies, their curses and their tombs continue to captivate our imaginations? It's a blend of the unknown, the supernatural and the ancient. It's the allure of an era long gone, an era that was incredibly advanced for its time. This obsession isn't just about the eerie tales of curses and doom, but it's also about the admiration for the sophistication of the ancient Egyptian civilization. From their architectural marvels to their intricate burial rituals, the ancient Egyptians were pioneers in various fields, which continues to inspire awe and wonder. So whether it's the intrigue of the mummy's curse, or the admiration for the ancient Egyptian civilization, the obsession is real and continues to thrive. If you find resonance with this video, please subscribe to our channel for more educative content and share this video to reach a wider audience. Stay tuned as we continue to unravel the mysteries of the past. Remember, history is full of surprises and the more we dig, the more we discover.